beautiful Sunday morning with you on today. We honor God from whom all blessings flow. Again, we thank you for your gifts of liberality, amen, and for the offering and the tithe that you have given today. We bless God for you, amen. Today we are going to move on into the word of God. We ask you to have your Bibles, if you will, to turn with us. To turn with us today, we shall be found in the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number one, and we're going to read verses 26 through 38, amen. Luke chapter number one, verses 26 through 38, amen. When you have those, amen, you can stand with us as we read the word of God. Luke chapter number one, beginning with verse 26, and it reads as follows. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind whether what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end then Mary said unto the angel how shall this be seeing I know not a man and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall overcome thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. We thank God for these verses. Amen. And today we're going to speak to you from the subject, spiritual expectancy. Spiritual expectancy. Let us bow. Gracious God, we come again to thee. God, we are so grateful and we're so thankful for this opportunity to stand before your people. God, we ask you now in this time and in this season, God, to anoint us, amen, that as we open our mouths, God, we might speak as the oracles of God, that your word may go forth with power, God, and with anointing and with clarity, that those that hear, amen, might know what the Spirit saith to the church. Now, bless your word, bless the hearer, and bless the doers, and we give your name all the glory, the honor, and the praise, and everybody said, amen, amen. Spiritual expectancy. Man, as we, amen, uh, enter so deeply into this holiday season, amen, and uh, the end of the year 2020, I think most of us would have to acknowledge that this has been a tumultuous year in the lives of not only, amen, us here locally, but those that are worldwide, worldwide. This has been amen, a year of testing, and amen, a year of loss, a year of, amen, trials like none that we have seen before, 
and it has tested our metal. Amen. It, 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 it has, amen, challenged us to go above and beyond just to maintain, amen, our normal lifestyles, our normal lifestyles. Amen. And, uh, amen, we, we, we thank God that as we begin to wind this year up, the Lord has given us, amen, a glimmer of hope and of expectancy that this too shall pass. Amen. This too shall pass. Amen. And, and but when I look into the word of God and not only in the word of God, but read the, the history, amen, the writings of Josephus, we find that, amen, the period, amen, leading up to the birth of Jesus Christ was one of the most treacherous and, amen, tumultuous periods in the history, amen, of Jerusalem or Israel, amen. We find that there was political unrest, amen. There was, amen, violence like none other. There was upheaval. There was religious tension, amen. Every adverse thing that you can think of that could go on in a society was happening at the birth of Jesus, amen. Those of you that know a little bit of world history, you understand the history of the Middle East and also the history of the Roman Empire, how that, amen, at one time, Rome ruled, amen, the most of the known world at that time, and Romans were oppressive rulers, amen. It was their way or the highway, and most of the time, amen, the highway led you somewhere you didn't want to go. They had a saying back then that all roads lead to Rome. Amen. Hallelujah. The Appian Way, amen, led to Rome. But amen, that was a tumultuous road because of the brutality of the Roman Empire. Amen. And those of us that know, amen, the prophecy of Christ, the life of Christ, his birth, his death, amen, that, uh, uh, he wasn't the only one crucified during that period of time. But, amen, before his birth, amen, when uh, the king, Herod, the great ruled, amen, there were uprisings, amen, Jewish uprisings all the time. There were always prophets or so-called messiahs, amen, that led the Jewish people to believe, amen, that they would be the ones that would liberate them. They would be the ones, amen, that would give them back autonomy, amen, rule over their own worship in their own capital, Jerusalem, in their own government, hallelujah. So, amen, it was an age of, amen, tumult and trouble, but it was also an age of great expectancy. Look at somebody say expectancy. Amen, hallelujah. There, I, I, I tell you one thing, children of God, whenever you are going through, no matter how bad it is, how dark it get, something in your spirit ought to make you expect that the God that you serve is going to show up. And not only is he going to show up, he's going to show out. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. So, amen, there was an atmosphere. There was a spirit of expectancy, amen, when Jesus was born. Everybody was looking for something better, looking for something better. Ah, this year, as this year ends with the Christmas season, I hope that we have a spirit of expectancy, amen. It was about the time that Jesus died, amen, that Herod the Great, amen, Jesus was born, Herod the Great died, amen, and he, amen, was followed by uh, his two sons. Kingdom was split between his two sons, and. And what they wanted to do was to continue their father's rule. Amen. And so they were just as treacherous. 
They were just as evil. Amen. And they were just as destructive as Herod. Matter of fact, they kept his name. Amen. And sometimes if you don't know exactly who you're reading about, you won't know which Herod they are talking about. Amen. But his two sons ruled, amen, in the, amen, the, the uh, Jewish part of Judea, as the province was called. Not because Judea was that great or important, but because it's set right in the middle of two of the most prized possessions of the Roman Empire. The, amen. Syria in Egypt, hallelujah, amen, and, and Judea sat there in the middle. So it was important that peace be kept in Judea so that it wouldn't upset these other two powerful regions that bordered Judea. Let me tell y'all something, amen, hallelujah. We are in the center of everything that goes on in this earth, amen. They don't see the church as, amen, important, as it really is, but amen, everything borders around what God has chosen us to be. Amen. And even in these, amen, tumultuous times, the church ought to be expecting God to do something. We ought to be at the center of it. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So we find that there was a spirit of expectation Expectancy, amen, hallelujah. It, 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 it simply, amen, defines an uh, uh, anticipatory belief or desire, amen, that I, I, I'm waiting for God to do something. And God always gives his people a sign. God always keep us in the loop, so to speak. And God don't do anything without want, uh, hallelujah, amen, children of God, the devil got no business sneaking up on you, hallelujah, you ought to be expecting him to try something stupid, amen, you ought to be expecting him to try something devilish, you ought to be expecting him mm, to be sneaky and cunning and deceitful, amen, and we are not to be, amen, uh, Fooled or, amen, deceived by Satan's cunningness. For the Lord warns us, amen. And, and during this period, amen, the Roman Empire was on edge, amen. And the church, or not the church, but the Jewish religion was on its edge. And, and there was a tension. There was a contention and a tension between them all the time, amen. And everybody expected something to happen. This morning as I was getting dressed, I was watching, amen, the news and they had the cameras, amen. Hallelujah, in Michigan where the first few batches of, amen, vaccine for COVID-19 was being packed on hot ice. And they loaded into two trucks sitting outside of the facility, one with UPS and one with FedEx. And man, they, 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 for hours, for hours, amen, those cameras were focused on, amen, from the inside of the warehouse out to the trucks, from the inside of the warehouse out to the trucks. And they said, we just want to be here to see, amen, when these first vials of this vaccine are rolled out of the building onto the truck, and when the truck pull off, we want our cameras to capture it. Because, amen, there is a spirit of expectancy going on in our country today. Amen, people are saying help is on the way. Amen, the vaccine has been approved now, and now it's been packaged, loaded on the trucks, and is on the way to the facilities wherein it might be administered. And in this end season, this time of year, people are expecting something good to happen. Amen. Church, what are you expecting today? Hmm? Amen. 
As we read the scriptures here, the Lord was preparing us for the prophecy that had been announced to Jeru, to the Jews, those at Jerusalem, for over some 1,200 years. Amen. If you look into the Old Testament, and amen, we've been studying the prophecies of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And there, there are over 100 of them found throughout the Old Testament. Amen. That just gave God's people, amen, a reason to hope. Amen. A reason to believe that it don't matter how bad it gets, God is going to do something special for you. Amen. Not only, amen, is there, amen, expectancy on the medical side. Amen. But this is still Christmas season. It's still holiday season. Amen. Children, amen, don't look at the news like we do. And guess what? Children are still expecting Huh? Amen. Some say Santa Claus. Amen. But we know, hallelujah, we know, amen, who we expect to bless us in this season. Amen. But uh, even when something good is about to happen, so much so that everybody is expecting something good to happen, we must be careful that we all understand exactly what and who we are expecting. Church, this is not the time to be distracted. This is not the time to, amen, put our hope somewhere else other than in God. Amen. Because knowing what we know, we lift our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. Why? Because all of my help come from the Lord that have made the heavens and the earth. And God just sent me here to tell you this morning, hallelujah, amen, that you need to have a spiritual expectancy. Hallelujah, amen. Because if the vaccine don't work, I don't know about you, I still got to live. Amen. I got to choose whether I'm going to take it or not. Or y'all ain't going to help me. Amen. And if all of my hope is in the vaccine, I'm in pitiful condition. I want you to take note that the Jewish political scene in Judea was in a mess. Kind of like I was yesterday. Hmm? And there were those that were glad to see Herod die. Hmm? Amen. And some of them, amen, there was one uh, uh, revolt led when they thought Herod was on his deathbed, and he wasn't. According to Josephus, amen, they thought he was laying on his deathbed. So they arose up and attacked the Roman God. Man, that's, that's, that's what, amen, the wise man said when they were trying Jesus. So there have been a whole lot of messiahs before him, and there are going to be a lot after him. And y'all know what happened to all of them. Uh, amen. The Roman Empire snuffed them out before they got started good. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, y'all just need to wait and see, because if God be in it, you can't stop it. The Romans can't stop it. Amen. Nothing in the world can hinder it. But if he be not the Christ, amen, he'll peter out on his own and he won't last. One thing about it, everybody in church don't have the same expectancy. Everybody don't come to church for the same reason. Everybody don't look to God for their help. But Jesus says certain people need to know what's about to happen. Lord, have mercy. And in the Christmas story, those two people were Joseph and Mary. We read the account in Luke. Amen. Hallelujah. Where 
Mary was giving a man the heads up. Amen. And if you go back and look in Matthew chapter 1, we'll find where Joseph was given the heads up. Let me tell y'all, church folk, everybody, amen, in leadership don't get their heads up. Amen. Everybody, hallelujah, amen, that got a mic in their hand don't get their heads up. Because, amen, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not discrediting anybody in particular. I got to work hard to make sure I get the heads up. <laughs> I got to stay in place so I understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the body of Christ. Because the Jewish religious religiosity, their leadership, they were expecting a Messiah. Hmm? They were expecting something to happen. Hallelujah. They knew the prophecies as well as Jesus did. Ah, hallelujah. But somehow they missed the message. Church, I'm here to tell you, to tell you don't miss the message. Amen. Your hope is not in Santa Claus. It's not in the vaccine. Amen. It's not amen, in the medical, amen, advancement. Yeah, God can bring us some deliverance from our current situation, but let me tell you something. Amen, the uh, COVID ain't the pandemic that we need to worry about. Amen. What we need to worry about is the, amen, pandemic of sinfulness and ungodliness, amen, and denial of what is right that has infected our nation from the top to the bottom. People calling wrong right and right wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. People claiming, amen, to advance the cause of Christ while at the same time denying the power thereof. The Lord sent the angel Gabriel because two people had to be with this program to make it work. Hallelujah. And, and somehow I was thinking that Mary might have been the first one. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Huh? It look, looked like he would have sent the angel to Mary first. <laughs> but now I, the order that it comes in my Bible is, hey amen. He went to Joseph. <laughs> and he told Joseph, fear not. Fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that thing that is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Amen. She's expecting, amen. But this thing is spiritual in nature. It's not natural. Hallelujah. Look at somebody that says supernatural. Ah, hallelujah. What God wants to do for us is supernatural in nature. Hallelujah. It's above what a man the vaccine can do. It is above what medical science can do. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulder. Ah, not Dr. Fauci. Not Donald Trump. Not Joe Biden. Not Kamala Harris. Amen. Not Pence. Hallelujah. Amen. Not the CDC but it's on his shoulder. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and this, this promise, this thing that we're expecting won't just help us get physical healing. Jesus. But his name shall be called Jesus. I wish I could get somebody with me just to say Jesus. 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 Let me give you a little bit of etymology of the name Jesus. It, 
That wasn't a new name. Wasn't an unheard of name. Huh? Amen. But if you read in the Old Testament, amen, that was a that, that was a young man followed Moses around called Joshua. Amen. Uh, the etymology of his name come from the same root that Jesus. And if you study the name Joshua, just mean God is our salvation. Hallelujah. He said, his name shall be called Jesus. For he shall heal the sick, raise the dead, cause the lame to walk, open the eyes of the blind, unstop the ears of, yeah, he gonna do all that. But what he really came to do was to save his people from their sin. Oh, if my people that are called by my name would humble, would humble, would humble themselves and pray, we wouldn't need an air vaccine. Hallelujah. Jesus. Uh, and turn from their wicked ways. Jesus. Jesus. I'm expecting, amen, that this pandemic going to pass and po people going right back in the same mode they were in before it ever hit. And if the church don't do something different, we'll have the same 10 or 12 people in church that we got now. Oh, but when we preach Jesus Christ and him crucified, his resurrection, hallelujah, and his saving power. People need deliverance. People need spiritual healing. Jesus. Expectancy. Spiritual expectancy. Amen. God wanted Joseph and Mary to know this thing is ain't about you two. Huh? Joseph, don't let your pride get in your way. Amen. And you know what convinces me the most is that Joseph fell in line with the program. Huh? Amen, huh? Amen. God didn't call me for that mission. Jesus. Didn't call most folk for that mission. Cause, because most people not that well connected with him. Don't have the kind of relationship with him where he can talk to you and tell you some stuff everybody else would shake their head at. Ah, Jesus. Y'all know the problem with the world today, and, and y'all might say, this, this got nothing to do with your message. Jesus. I'm the father of two sons, two children, hmm? and I never had one. But I can understand where Joseph was because to expect a child is one of the proudest things a real man. Amen. I, I ain't talking about these past legs walking around here with a body in them. Amen. That's one of the, amen, greatest things a real man can experience to say, I have fathered a child. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But if, 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 if my wife had come to me before we were married, amen, and we had been together now, and she said, Fred, I, I'm, I'm with a child. Amen. Man, unless the angel Gabriel had visited my room. Come on, somebody. How many ever seen an angel? Probably because you wouldn't believe what he told you anyway. <laughs> amen. Unless an angel visited, amen, we would have had a tough go of it. But somehow relationship. And, and, and what I want to say, amen, to young folk, amen. Amen. Before you become naturally expecting, you need a relationship. Oh, amen. Lord, have mercy. He's a preacher. You had to go there, didn't you? Let me, that's part of what the problem is today. There is a disconnect in relationship. Amen. A woman, ah, 
expecting a child got so much going on in the inside. Man, she don't need to worry about what baby daddy gonna do. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me. She don't need to be worried about, amen, hallelujah, whether or not he gonna put food on the table or offer, amen, hallelujah, amen, sustenance. Because just the expectation of what's going on in her body is enough by itself. Huh? And she need to have a relationship with baby daddy where she know I know everything going to be all right. That's the kind of relationship Mary had with God, Lord. That was a spiritual expectation. My time is up. Lord, how much? There was a spiritual expectation. It wasn't a natural thing. Hallelujah. It was something that was instituted and divinely propagated by God. Amen. During this season, refuge. Amen. With all of your online shopping, with all of your preparation, with all of our gift giving, Jesus. Amen. And that we will do. We will do. I, I promise you, half of y'all probably got most of your Christmas shopping done already. Amen. Huh? Amen. If you haven't, you probably don't plan to do that much. Amen. And that's a good thing. Hmm? Because we need to make sure our expectation of this season be upon that which is spiritual. Amen. And in my conclusion, I want to remind you that the Jews knew Christ was supposed to be on the way. The political climate. Amen. Hallelujah. Should have made them acutely aware that something's got to happen here. Something's got to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know what they were looking for? Amen, I told you the name Jesus was a common name. Hmm? But you know what made his name different? Amen. His, that, 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 that last part of his name, the Christ. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Jesus means salvation. Hmm? But everybody that had the name Joshua wasn't a savior. Come on, somebody. Amen. But this Jesus, amen, he let, amen, hallelujah, uh, uh, Joseph know and Mary know huh, that he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. During this season, the greatest gift you could have is the gift of the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus came. Amen. Somebody said, amen, hallelujah. He's a gift that just keeps right on giving. Hallelujah. hallelujah. He didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Spiritual expectancy. Refuge. The pandemic is going to end, whether the vaccine does it or not. It's going to end. Hmm? It is going to end. Man, the question is, what do you expect from God that's going to make your life different than it was before it came? Jesus. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. We expect God to do spiritual things among us. Change lives. Amen. To heal marriages. To change relationships. Hallelujah. To unite husbands and wives. Amen. To give children a spirit of obedience. Hallelujah. Glory. And to give pastors a servant heart. Amen, amen. I'm expecting something spiritual to come out of this thing. Amen. And when Jesus came, the Bible says he came unto his own, 
who should have been expecting him, and his own received him not. But to as many, huh? Ah, that received him, to them gave he power. Power. Holy Ghost power. Adoption power. Cleansing power. Wonder working power. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Spiritual expectancy. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Amen. We hope, amen, that somebody is looking for God.